Hello, welcome everyone to today's session on ABI Inform, uh, available through the UDC Library here at the University of the District of Columbia. Today's session, we're going to hear from uh, Joanne Hogan of ProQuest, who will walk us through all the wonderful offerings that ABI Inform has for our faculty and our students. As a reminder today, I just wanted to let you know that this database is available to you of through the library's website. And also this session is being recorded and will be sent to you and available on our YouTube page, uh, possibly later today, if not later this week. Also, anyone who is attending this session live will receive a certificate of attendance. At, after the demonstration, we will have time for plenty of Q&A, but please feel free to pop your questions in the chat as we go and I will monitor and we'll let Joanne know uh, if anything needs to be answered right away. Otherwise, you can wait until the end and either ask through chat or through uh, raising, uh, raising your hand and unmuting yourself. Um, at the end, we will also have an assessment link for you and we'd love to hear back from you. Uh, that's enough for me. So I'd like to welcome Joanne and she'll take it away from here. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. Welcome everyone. Um, I'm really excited to be able to speak to you today about ABI Inform. Just a little background about me. I'm uh, Joanne Hogan. I'm Director of Product Management here at ProQuest. Uh, I've been with the company for over 18 years, personally managing the business products for about seven or eight of those years. I also manage a, a team of product managers who is responsible for a lot of our other databases um, that are also available through your library, things like ProQuest Central, um, some of our other databases in social sciences, health and technology and other areas. So I'm just going to start off today with, with just a few slides to give you a quick overview of what ABI Collection is and some of the content that's contained within it. Um, I'll feature some of the, the market research reports, which I know are a, a, lot, a lot of times of interest to uh, teaching faculty, especially. Um, and then we'll go in and, and just do a quick demo of the database itself. Okay, so uh, ABI Inform, it's a, um, it's a large database. It, it contains an awful lot of information, over 120 million items, uh, primarily known as a journal database. So there are lots of journals uh, in available in full text in this product. Uh, but there's also a pretty good collection of um, additional kinds of, of scholarly content. So dissertations, working papers, and conference papers, uh, which are very important, especially to our, our faculty users who are interested in getting access to the most recent scholarship. Uh, there's uh, quite a large amount of content that's really useful for teaching as well. So things like um, tools and templates and market research reports, also a growing uh, collection of business cases, which I know can be very important for teaching. Um, that's all rounded out with quite a large collection of news from some key providers, including things like the Wall Street Journal, The Economist, uh, the Financial Times, and others. And I'll also point out that uh, this database has also got about 93% of its content available in full text. So while we do have access to what we call abstracting and indexing for um, quite a lot of scholarly journals where we do not have full text rights for those journals, um, a, a good piece of this database is available with full text. Uh, in terms of meeting user needs, uh, we do a lot of research with faculty. Um, some of this is online through um, kinds of surveys that we run within our platform itself. Um, other times it's, it's survey requests that we send out to faculty or requests for interviews. And what we hear from our users, uh, including faculty, sometimes students and a business librarians that we speak to is that uh, a lot of different content is needed to meet um, the lecturers or the researchers needs, both for their own research and for uh, um, supporting their courses for students. Um, so we find out that from, from the faculty, especially that um, a wide range of content, a real diversity of content going beyond just journals to things like um, trade publications, news, wire feeds, um, all the kinds of things that we can bring together to support diverse um, both assignment requirements and research needs are really important. So this is kind of a guiding principle as we're creating our database products is that uh, more is better and uh, we like to have as many content types available as possible. So this is just a bit of an overview of some of those diverse content needs. So over 1500 scholarly journals and these are journals with active full text. Uh, about 57% of those have some kind of site score and about 43% of those are embargoed. So an embargo is a situation where in working with some of our licensing publishers, uh, they do not let us have the most recent issue in available with uh, full text displayed. 
In that case, we can give you the indexing so you can be aware that articles have been published, uh, but you often have to wait anywhere from a few days to up to a year, for example, to get access to that full text. Um, you will see probably from the database on your website that if your library has access to the full text directly from some of the scholarly publishers, uh, you can often link into it. So in that case, the product becomes a, a useful discovery tool, um, but, but also um, has full text for a lot of these journals. Um, I mentioned the other kinds of scholarly things like working papers. So over 500,000 working papers from sources like NEBR. Um, there are 50,000 full text dissertations. Quite a good number of, of again, active full text uh, trade and magazine publications. Um, almost 400 active news sources. Those are both newspapers, um, kind of online forms of newspapers, again, some popular wire feeds, um, and even things like blogs. Uh, case studies and business cases, about 15,000 of those. Uh, quite a large number of company profiles, and I'm going to spend some time talking about that, um, as well as industry reports and country reports. These are some of the, the scholarly publishers that are contained within our product with active full text. So we have journals from Palgrave Macmillan and Emerald. We have all of Emerald's journals, um, especially for business, but we have Emerald across the board and some of our other products as well. Some journals from Taylor and Francis, um, our most popular management journal comes from MIT Sloan. And then we also have a good number of, of journals supporting business economics and some of the adjacent disciplines from, from both uh, Springer and, and CUP. Uh, in terms of why we cover things like working papers, dissertations, and conference papers, I mean, you know better than anybody that uh, scholarship often takes a few years to make it into uh, a, a published journal um, issue. So we like to try and find anything we can that will suggest to you what is being covered uh, in the fields of business and economics research. So again, a large number of working papers, a lot of those have full text link outs. Um, over 50,000 dissertations um, and over 20,000 conference papers. This is just an example of why we like to have things like working papers in our products. So a really good example of a paper that first appeared in, in the Ideas Working Paper um, series back in 2013, but actually didn't make it into um, a, a journal until 2018. So again, just giving you the option to see those um, articles before they actually get published and know who's working on what. Dissertations are a really valuable um, piece of ProQuest content set, uh, really valuable in terms of understanding uh, how a, a topic is particular topics being covered. They're, they're really covered well in depth. Um, also, we find that the, the references are very important to people who use um, dissertations. They often act as a very complete and, and current bibliography for any given topic. And you can see here, you can easily go in and view the, the references within the, the dissertations. And if uh, that full text is available um, in ABI or in, in your other products, you can have an option to go and find those as well. I mentioned case studies, uh, and this is an area where traditionally ProQuest and other vendors have had a real hard time uh, licensing um, cases from, from the business schools that produce them. Uh, they're often a very secure and valuable source of revenue for those programs uh, and not easily licensed, but we have been making some progress in recent years and are building out a, a decent case of our decent uh, collection of cases. So at the moment we've added recently cases from the Thunderbird School. We're in the process of loading cases from IE Business School in Spain. We have indexing a link out to the full text uh, cases from MIT Sloan, which are fully available on their, on their website. Um, and we will continue looking at and trying to source additional sources of, of cases to support your teaching. Um, another thing to point out is um, some functionality around specific publications. And this is an actual example of a, of a course website that I've seen. Um, and we speak a lot to business students to try and understand how business students do research, what kind of assignments they get, how they approach that research, uh, and how we can make it easier for both the student and the faculty to, to make it easier for students to get access to these. And this is quite a typical example where, where students are often recommended to go and read particular publications like the Wall Street Journal, for example. Uh, in this case, it's a, it's a marketing course. Uh, the students are, are expected to not only go in and read the Wall Street Journal to stay current on business topics, 
but to also use and cite that publication in their marketing course. So what we hear from students a lot of times is when they see something like this, and the, the, the professor might have even recommended, like in this case where the, the, the students are told to go and take out a personal subscription, that they will often go to the Wall Street Journal website, read as many free articles as they can, uh, and then go back to the library and complain that they don't have access to it. So with ABI Inform Collection, you, have, you do have access to the Wall Street Journal. Um, so if you, you go and look it up in that publications tab, you can get into the publications page. Uh, it defaults to show today's issue of the Wall Street Journal. Um, and then there's this copy URL or create alert functional, functionality along the top here. So if you did want to ever copy that URL and embed it in something like that course website, you could um, to make it really easy for your students to go and get access to an essential publication like this without digging around for it or, or facing taking out a personal subscription. These are just some examples of some of the, the business magazines and newspapers that are available. Again, things like The Economist. We try to be international in our coverage. So you see publications like McLean's from Canada, Les Echos from France. Uh, the Financial Times is available in full text. That is embargoed 30 days. Um, and business Insider is, a, is a, quite a new um, edition that's been really popular with our users. Um, and things like McKinsey Quarterly. And that's another area where we're trying to beef up our coverage. So we have um, insights from Boston Consulting coming soon. Um, and we're also looking to get more information from some of the top accounting firms. In terms of some of the, the teaching resources that are primarily used for students to support their courses, things like marketing assignments, doing business cases, maybe capstone or consulting assignments. Uh, there's quite a large selection of market research sources available in ABI from some premium providers. So these are some of the major ones. We're gonna dig a little deeper into some of these. So I typically break these down uh, by, by type. So in terms of company um, reports, we have sources like Global Data. Uh, Reportal is a source of annual reports. Uh, Aquis Data also gives us some, some company profiles for finding out what's going on with um, companies that are at, at risk of bankruptcy or in bankruptcy proceedings. The Distressed Company Alert is useful. We have corporate benchmarking reports for about 3,000 companies from Plunkett Research. Um, you also have access to Hoover's company profiles. They're not within um, ABI collection, but they are available to you if you go to something uh, a product called ProQuest Central. Uh, we also have a collection of analyst reports. Those are not available in your package. For industry reports, our, our major provider is uh, BMI, now called Fitch. Um, they provide us industry reports kind of at the country level, um, really useful. Uh, we also have industry reports and commodity reports from EIU, um, from DMB, the first research reports, some very specialized reports from a small company called Iraq that deals mostly with the automotive industry. Uh, we also have um, industry reports from Plunkett and Barnes. So Plunkett is covering primarily US industry coverage uh, and Barnes has both US and some global coverage. In terms of country reports, really useful for students, especially understanding things like uh, economic demographic information, as well as risk of doing business in specific regions. We have a, a good collection of reports from EIU. Um, we also have the country um, risk reports from BMI or Fitch, uh, as well as some, some great um, economic data and information and forecasts from Oxford Economics. And then there's another small company called Chartmaker who provides us with some really nice kind of very visual um, economics type reports that quite, can be quite useful for students to, to really visualize in terms of charts and graphics what's going on within a specific economy or country. So just to give you a little bit of background on, on some of these major ones um, that might be of interest to you. So Global Data is a, quite a large, well-known market research firm. We have uh, quite a large number of company profiles from this company. Um, they give us information that, that often gives you kind of overviews of what's happening in a company, some typically quarterly financial information. Sometimes they have company SWOT analyses. Um, they have some information around um, the global medical business and their kind of pipeline summaries. Um, and they, we often also see some things like um, deals and alliances information from this company. Business Monitored International, um, here's a, a great company where we have their, all of their industry reports and their country risk reports. So again, these are really useful for 
um, understanding what's going on within an industry within a certain region. They, they can tend to be quite lengthy reports, over 60 some odd pages. Um, they're quite nice because they get updated fairly regularly, unlike some providers. So we get quarterly updates of these reports. They often cover things with um, different analyses like a SWOT analysis. They go into detail around market trends, provide forecasts um, and competitive information. So those are really useful again for supporting um, student research, if not your own. Plunkett Research, uh, we have industry reports for them covering over 400 kind of industry sectors. Um, again, those are quite useful for covering things like uh, what's going on in terms of sales across the industry, um, employee counts, financial ratios, all kinds of other benchmarking information. And then they also provide us with these corporate benchmarking reports for about 3,000 companies, which again kind of take a, uh, an overview of the industry, the company's place within the industry, um, and then kind of a deeper dive within a specific company and, and some of its um, peers or competitors. From EIU, uh, we get a number of different reports from them, but uh, one of the more popular ones is their country reports. Um, they, they come out, out every month or so, but we do have a six month embargo on these. Um, even so, they tend to be a bit more current than, than some other providers. Uh, they give a, a really nice snapshot or overview of what the company or the country is, is um, some background on its economic and political outlooks, um, things around international relations, and they're also very useful for um, both historic and forecast data. Uh, for commodity prices, we have a couple of different providers. Again, Economist Intelligence Unit, we get um, a couple of different reports from them covering uh, food, feed, stuff, and beverage commodities, as well as industrial raw materials. And then from Oxford Economics, uh, we get uh, very decent reports uh, covering 26 different commodities, um, often with some regional information. And again, they're really useful for providing both forecasts and historical trends. Um, so another really nice source of that kind of information. Um, just to, to show you, I'm going to use a, a ProQuest internal account for the demo, but uh, this is what your account would look like and a couple of things to highlight. If you ever want to know what's what's happening with ABI, there's usually a link to a, a PDF that gets updated on about a quarterly basis. And that's really useful for seeing some of the, the new publications that have been added. Again, this is quite a large resource. It can be very difficult to keep up with um, some of the sources that are, that are coming into a product like this. So um, if you ever want to see what's new, that's one way to do it. Um, your library has branding, so you can always get back to your library uh, and continue your research there or, or reach out to somebody in the library. Um, and this also just kind of shows um, how this product is organized. So ProQuest, again, is a very large database provider. Um, a lot of our products can be searched either individually or as a collection. So ABI Inform is a, is a collection. When you come into it, you're actually searching three different databases. So ABI Dateline, which is primarily our collection of, of news sources. ABI Global, which contains primarily um, our scholarly sources, plus some of the major business press. Um, so if you wanted to search the scholarly alongside things like The Economist or The Wall Street Journal, you can do that from ABI Global directly or always from ABI, this kind of search level, high level search level. And then ABI Trade and Industry is actually one of the larger pieces and it contains all of the, the things like the trade publications uh, and all the market research reports. So I'm going to stop with that content overview and just check in and see if there's any questions. There are no questions waiting in the chat, but let's give a second or two to see if any come in. Um, and if you'd like, prefer to ask your question, please feel free to unmute yourself. Okay, well, we're waiting. I'm just going to start loading up the database itself. Megan, can you just confirm that you can see ProQuest now? Yes. Great. And I'm not seeing any questions, so I think we can go ahead. Great, okay. So again, this is a, a ProQuest internal account, so it will look a little different from what you might see when you're on a page like this, but the functionality is all pretty much gonna look the same. Okay, so here you have ABI Inform Collection, as I mentioned, um, some of the information that's available on this start page. A um, couple of things to point out here, the, the full text limiter is available right up here. You can also just limit searches to peer reviewed content. 
there's just a little bit of an about sign here just to, to make it clear what this means. Um, peer review can be kind of a complex thing to to understand. So when you're when you're clicking this and limiting to peer review, um, I just will point out that that means you're limiting to a peer, what's typically called a peer review journal, not necessarily just articles. So sometimes with even with that limiter checked, you will find results like, you know, front matter items from a journal, table of contents and things like that. Of course, they're not peer reviewed, but because they're in a peer review journal, that's why you're finding them. Well, I might start at the publications page just to show you how you can get an, oh, again, a kind of an overview of some of the content that's available here. Um, again, you can always limit this view to just what's available in ProQuest in full text from this view. You can go in and browse by specific source types. So if you really just wanted to see what's available for newspapers, you can browse it or search it that way. Again, if you just wanted to see the scholarly, you could do that as well. Um, you can also search. So often we're, we're searching by title, but I'm just going to mention this publication summary because it's kind of useful. Because if you ever wanted to see all of the journals that are available by a specific publisher, for example, you could use that search field. And now you're just browsing the journals that are available from Emerald, for example. Um, let me just go back to that. Let's take a look at The Economist real quick. So searching by The Economist, you can see both the magazine and the online version. A couple of things to point out here. Once you've come to a page like this, again, there's that copy URL. And once you are in this, you've been authenticated through your library. Any kind of proxy information will get copied into that URL. So you can embed it in a, in a course page or reading list. And your students uh, should just go right through without having to go in and authenticate. You can always, from this page, search within a particular publication. Or if you wanted to go back and view the historical issues, you can, you can get it that way as well. Um, a couple of things to point out here are the different formats. So um, with as many of our publications as we can, we're often limited in what we can get um, by the publisher. So depending on how the publisher makes their content available or what kinds of rights they have available to extend to companies like ProQuest, uh, you get different kinds of full text formats. So for The Economist, we do have a PDF format, which is really nice because you get things like all of these images. Um, whereas if you're just in the HTML full text format, uh, you often don't see those. It depends on whether they're embedded or not. So um, I would just encourage you to use both if you want to make sure you're getting all of the different content types. Uh, another nice thing and reason why we try and get as many different formats as possible is because sometimes you can do other things with this full text format, like you can do the this text to speech feature if you wanted to listen to the article or if you had um, reading disabled uh, students that, that have to listen to content. Um, sometimes it's not the case with The Economist, but with a lot of our content, we also have um, a translation feature. So if you see a journal that's in German, for example, and uh, you wanted to see the text in English, you could convert that on the fly and get uh, the English version of that article. Otherwise, with a, a product like ProQuest well, or uh, like ABI, you can always do a full text search, but um, I like to show the advanced search page because, again, it is such a large resource that uh, it's good to know exactly how things work. So again, from the advanced search page, you can always limit to full text or to peer reviewed. Um, again, it's over 120 million items. Um, so it's, it's good to know kind of how everything works to make sure that you're able to, to wade through all of the thousands of results that you're going to see and, and find the most important information. Um, another thing to point out is some of these um, options here. So a lot of times um, people's accounts or customers' accounts have their default setting to search anywhere. And that searches across everything. So all of the full text, all of the indexing that's available. Did it go? Come on. So you can see over 24,000 results here, which might be quite a lot to wade through. So if you ever wanted to 
have a little bit more precise experience, you might want to type the search and limit it, for example, to everything but full text. So in that case, now we're just searching things like the title or the abstract or the ProQuest indexing. And now you're down to 3,000 results, probably quite a lot more precise. So I'll point that out. A um, couple other things to point out about the advanced search page. There's all of these different lookups available here. Uh, these are basically the indexes. So if you wanted to look up the companies and organizations, you're looking at here the entire, everywhere in the database where, where a company or an organization has been indexed with that field. It's uncontrolled, so it's you can see it's quite messy. But if you ever did want to just see what all terms have been indexed uh, with a specific company name, um, this is a way that you could do it to get a bit more precision. So again, you see all kinds of different versions for Microsoft. Just point that out. One area where this is quite different is in uh, the NAICS industry. So here, this is a controlled field and you can look it up and see if you really wanted to just see what's available in terms of searching for articles um, about specific industries. You can pick your NAICS term, add it to your search and just search that way. Once you've done a search like this, you can again always limit your, your searches to a specific source type over here on the left. Um, or you could use the, the pull downs, the filters to see what kinds of companies have also been indexed with that term if you wanted to find articles that have been indexed both about that company and that industry. Um, so that's another way to get into it. Otherwise, um, some of the more useful fields are down here in terms of source type and doc type. So the source types, um, there's a, a smaller number of them, but they tend to be the larger things like magazines and newspapers, um, dissertations and theses, for example, if you clicked that and you were only interested in seeing finding dissertations about Keynes. You could run that search. Um, and again, it's just a, an easier way to kind of really limit what you're searching and find a little bit more precision. On the doc types, you'll notice there's quite a few of them available. Um, I like these, especially for finding the market research sources. So for example, if you wanted to find just company profiles, if you just kept scrolling along here, uh, you would get the company profile limiter. So you could search that. If you wanted to see a specific results for a specific company, give that try as a keyword. Now you're seeing different kinds of just reports that are about GameStop. Clear that. Likewise, uh, another really useful one is the country reports. So again, because we have some great sources for country information, um, you could just click the limiter for country report. If you wanted just country reports about a specific region, you could type that into the location field. And now again, you're just seeing country reports from uh, BMI Fitch, EIU and others just about that region. And then I think the last one I'll really feature here is the industry report. So again, there's also a document type for an industry report. Click here. Type your keyword. Oops. So I forgot to uh, clear my, my Nigeria limiter. So now you're just seeing industry reports that have the search term ele consumer electronics in them that are about or covering Nigeria, for example.
I think maybe another final one that I'll just point out for these, clear this form this time. So I mentioned the case studies and the business cases, that is also a limiter for the business cases. So if you just searched that, clicked that and hit search, you'll get an idea of some of the business case providers that are here. So um, the Society of Human Resource Management is another case provider where we've just added some cases. Um, there's quite a large number of, of results here that are an abstract only. So we do index cases from Ivy and some other business schools. But if you only ever wanted to see the full text cases, just have to click that limiter and it will filter to get you to the just over 3000 full text cases. Um, just a couple more of the advanced search features in case you're trying to do some more advanced research and you're inclined to use some of these features. Uh, ProQuest does still support a command line search. So if you're interested in creating extremely complex Boolean queries and you wanted to see all of the different indexing fields that are available in ProQuest, there's quite a long list here. Um, so you could try those. Um, a nice one to be aware of is the publisher field. So um, let's see, what's a good one? If you only wanted to see just re results from Dow Jones, for example, the publisher field would be a good one just to use. So you just fill that in, hit search. And now you've got over 20 million results from Dow Jones. You can see how those break down by publication title. So we have the Dow Jones Institutional News Wire Feed, which is quite voluminous. Uh, but you can see all of the different publications from Dow Jones as well to get into specific ones. And likewise, if, oops, do that. Um, I'll just point out the thesaurus as well. So uh, the ProQuest thesaurus is quite large and multidisciplinary. There's a couple ways you can get into it. You can either browse certain terms or you can search for them. So I'm looking up for cybersecurity, see if that's a precise indexing term. Um, you can see there is a term for cybersecurity. If you click on that, uh, you'll see that it's, it's actually um, a term that is being recommended within a broader term for, for computer security. So you can always get in uh, take a look at any of these terms. If you want a little bit more precision, you can figure out which one you want, but otherwise you could just click that to search any of these broader terms for cybersecurity and get your results. Um, if you ever wanna do anything with your results, oops, I had that still, limited to business case. So you can see that's why some of these are just cases. But if you wanted to create some output, you can click your results there. And I just have to clear up here. So, and you'll see all these options along the top. I have to move this window. There we go. So you can either pick to cite items that you've selected um, by different styles or you can export directly to things like EndNote or RefWorks or Noodle Tools. You can decide that you want to email anything that you've selected to yourself. There is a My Research function that's available in ProQuest. If you click that, you would have to create an account. But once you've done that, um, you could save things like searches or results into your, your research account um, and, and keep coming back to that. That's weird. Um, there was a couple of things to point out around the advanced search page as well. Up along the top, the very top right here, you can always get into your recent searches to either go back and refine them or review them. Um, if you ever wanted to combine different searches to create a kind of a super Boolean, you can do that as well. Anything that you have saved for this session in ABI, um, you can always go back and appear up here in this little folder. 
Um, and at the very top, there's um, some kind of personal area. So again, if you've got your own research account, you can either go in, log into it or create one. Um, if you've got books from ProQuest and have a bookshelf saved, you can get in there. If for whatever reason you wanted to change the interface language from there, you can do that as well. So if you changed it to French, then a lot of the functionality on the pages you'll see um, is now available in, in French. Taking a while for that. So again, so the articles aren't translated into French, but the interface itself is now available in French. So those are the highlights that I had planned to show today. Are there any questions now? All right, as we uh, wait to see if any of those come in, um, I would like to thank you for that wonderful demonstration. Um, I know the publication alert function and embedding a publication link into Blackboard is probably something um, several of our faculty might start using now. I was unaware of that, so I know I will be touting that. Um, and then also the ProQuest Thesaurus, that, that's a wonderful tool. Is that new? Oh no, the okay. Thesaurus has been around for, for ages, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been one of those things we missed, but that's a great tool for demonstrating uh, how to broaden and narrow searches. Just it, much more visual than talking about it. So thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, the ProQuest Thesaurus actually uh, grew out of the, AB, the original ABI Thesaurus. So, so anybody who's not aware, ABI Inform has been around since 1971 and actually was an MBA project. It was a student project created by two MBA students who were finding it difficult to find information and um, for, for business research. At the time it was all buried in print publications and hadn't really been thoroughly indexed. So it's been around for a long time, went online with probably the late 70s oh, wow. and something called Dialogue. <laughs> I remember Dialogue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is a wonderful tool. So uh, if anyone has any questions, please pop them in the chat or unmute yourself. Um, I just want to say thank you for coming today. And as a reminder, we will be sharing this recording and any certificates of attendance with those of you who attended live today. And I have dropped a feedback form in the chat. We would love to hear from you since this is a new series of events we're offering. We'd Love to hear about what you'd like to see on top of this or what you'd like to see change. Um, we'll wait a few more minutes, but Joanne, I'd like to thank you today for joining us and for that wonderful demonstration. Thank you for inviting me. I really appreciate it. I'm not seeing any questions come in under the recording, so I'm going to stop recording now. And again, uh, thank you for attending today.